But the question that I would have, Rivero sits 10 seconds ahead of Michael Andretti. Gary Gerald, he's going to really be going a long way on the fuel tank that he has now. Can he make it to the end? We're just talking with that with the crew, Paul. This is the 200, New England 200, but that's a little misleading because remember this track is a little more than a mile long, 1.058 to be specific. Consequently, the race distance, 211 miles, and further of consequence, the pit windows have been narrow for a two-stop race. Andre Rivero pitted on lap 121. He'd have to go 79 laps, and if it stays green all the way, there's a concern over fuel. So they've gone slightly to a fuel conservation mode. They would really like to have a yellow to take away any of that suspense. Jimmy Vassar runs in fifth, but Emerson Fittipaldi just got past him, and Vassar's beginning to fall backwards, so perhaps Vassar has a problem here. Running an average speed of 129.7 miles an hour, we have had two caution periods, one for Fernandez, one for Scott Pruitt. You've already heard from Fernandez. Scott Pruitt is okay as well. Hopefully, we'll be hearing from him shortly. But the record here is Bobby Rahal set back in 1992 at 133.6, so at 129, we're beginning to close in on it. On board with Gordon, we watched out the window two laps earlier when Vassar got himself into all sorts of trouble on the way to turn three, went right up beside the wall, backed off, lost several positions, not from cars who were passing it for position, but from lap cars, now he gathers it up again. Clearly here, Gordon played with the throttle. He's on, off, on, off. That tells you he's trying to balance it. If the car handled well, he would get on in one long, smooth application of power that's always the indication of a confident driver that doesn't expect anything unusual to happen. Back to the pits, Gary Gerald. One of the concerns, Paul, for all of these drivers late in the race, if you get outside the groove, you get up into the gray, you pick up all of that loose rubber that's come off tires through the preceding laps. Drivers in the driver's meeting yesterday, several of them, including Robbie Gordon, Paul Tracy, very concerned about that because with the tire battle between Goodyear and Firestone, compounds have gotten softer, tires throw more debris up and you get off the line and cost you. That was the problem for Jimmy Vassar just moments ago. He got in the gray, he picked up a lot of excess rubber, having a hard time scraping it off. It's impacted the handling of the car. Watching Jimmy Vassar, car 12's falling back to sixth now. Guzman just ahead of him, but Guzman, of course, running down in 14th, one of the lap cars. Right behind Vassar is Gordon. Emerson Fittipaldi, there he is, Jan Vikas. Well, we check with the Penske crew, and it turns out that Emerson Fittipaldi's race setup has been just about perfect. They haven't changed the car all day, and right now the Penske team is trying to get up from one lap down. They're actually radioing to Al Hunter Jr., giving him intervals, and they're going to try very, very hard here in the closing stages to catch Andre Rivero and get back on the lead lap. with 38 laps to go. Fuel will be part of it. Michael Andretti a second, 16 seconds back. The unusual combination of this season, a rookie driver, he was here last year in the Indy Lights series. He wasn't a winner, but a rookie driver in a Reinhardt car with a Honda engine and Firestone tires. Something that has never proven itself in the past to be successful. And Steve Horn has put this package together what a superb job this team has done. A new team back in IndyCar racing. Of course, Steve Horn, a lot of you will know him from his days at True Sports, and he was so successful with Bobby Rahal. And again next year, he wants to run an Indy Lights team as well as an IndyCar team. On board with Bobby Rahal, sits in 12th place. Guy who came in here with a chance at the championship. It seems to be going away now. The championship is right now firmly in the grasp of Jack Villeneuve. You can hear Ray Hall's style different to Robbie Gordon's. Listen to the power up. 
communication. about that as you know Barry Green Kim Green Tony Sakali the entire crew down here they are so good at staying focused and keeping their driver and team members focused that's what they're doing right now he says that Jack is telling him that the car is good it's not great it's very very slippery out there and the slightest miscue that gets you off the primary groove can be disastrous but as far as fuel and everything else they're right on target they like the way they've been moving consistently up I think they'd be delighted well we know they'd be delighted if they could get this thing over right now with two races to go but they just don't really want to talk about that particular aspect they're just trying to do the best job they can at the moment in these remaining 32 laps well the possibility seems very real at the moment Andre Rivero Michael Andretti two cars on the lead lap and Freddy 12 seconds back trying to close on Andre Rivero. Fuel may help decide this. Back at the New England 200, Loudon, New Hampshire, Andre Rivero out in front, Michael Andretti second. Nothing has changed in the order since we left you. Al Enzer Jr. is third, then Jack Villeneuve, Emerson Fittipaldi runs in fourth place. We'll give you a relationship here now. There is the leader of the race looking back for Michael Andretti as the leader flashes across the line, completing 173 laps and looking for Rivero. seven seconds behind Andre Rivero. To give you an idea, Paul, of the difference in lap speeds, Andre Rivero was three miles an hour faster on the last lap than Michael Andretti, so he has this race well under control as long as he has enough fuel in that Honda car to go all the way to the checkered flag. So 25 laps, a little over 25 miles to go. Michael Andretti still trying to run Andre Ribeiro down while Ribeiro is looking for his first ever win in the Indy cars. We'll be back for the conclusion of the New England 200. Back keeping an eye on Andre Ribeiro. We just ran a check of everybody up and down the pits. And the key players at the front, Andre, Michael, well, they don't seem to have any problem whatsoever with fuel. Not so sure the same situation is true at Penske Racing. Al Enzer Jr. runs in third place right now. He's 57 laps since his last stop. And Jack Villeneuve now sits in fourth place. And one factor that is going to affect the overall outcome of a championship and a possible wrap of it here today, as we suggested at the starting of the show, is where that appeal with Al Enzer Jr. over his win in Portland. Remember, he was disqualified and the win given to Jimmy Vassar. Well, if Al wins that appeal, then he'll come out of this race only 34 points behind Jack, and so the championship not yet determined, and that's based on little, little Al's position right now. So the championship can go on, and the appeal, well, it'll be some time yet before it will be heard. They're still putting the uh, panel of three appeals judges together. Seventeen to go for the Brazilian. Studied law for a while. Andre Ribeiro. Honda Power, Firestone Tires. Tasman looking for their first victory. Steve Horn, who was so prominent in bringing Bobby Ray Hall to championships, stepped away from the Indy cars for a while, got his feet under him as his own owner. Had success in Indy Lights. Now back up to the Indy cars. And look at the results. Went to Europe, Paul, to do the British Formula 3 championship with limited success. But he came up through the Indy Light Series. That's a good shot of his team manager, team owner, Steve Horn, on the radio to his young rookie who is learning so much this afternoon, leading this race in style. 
the only the only thing he came here with was the rookie of the year honors from last year what a superb job he's showing today you got a view of him at the start the uh, senior senator from Indiana Dick Luger former mayor of Indianapolis big racing fan got to do something I've always wanted to do watch from a starting stand at the start at the start of the race has joined us up in the booth watching up here as we continue to watch Andre Ribeiro and Michael Andretti as Michael's still trying to reel him in but it's not happening lap for lap as they get into traffic Ribeiro goes faster then Michael will match the speed and suddenly Ribeiro pulls away again but at the moment we can only presume that Ribeiro is beginning to take things easy. We saw him shoot round the outside of Michael earlier in a very dangerous looking move, got away with it. We saw him lock his brakes inside Guzman. He got away with that. Sometimes you don't always get away with the three times. So he just needs to take things easy because he has all the tools this afternoon to win this New England 200. Nothing changes down through the order, though Fittipaldi is now beginning to close in a bit on Villeneuve. There you see Fittipaldi as the leader starting to close in. Fittipaldi just ahead of him in the blue and white car of Villeneuve, Villeneuve just ahead of that. The only thing that could change things, Paul, is a yellow flag. That would give Michael another opportunity possibly to pounce. However, the traffic would not be in, would, would not help him then because the leaders, we presume, would be at the head of the uh, head of the field. But one impressive thing, Paul, was how this Firestone car could duck down to the inside and get grip on that low line and speed as opposed to his his opposition. Oh, you know, the pass he made on Michael. That was spectacular when he just darted to the inside. You wouldn't think the car would stick under those kind of lateral G-forces. Boy, it sure did. Start at first, currently first. What a piece of videotape that will be when he gets to look at this race. We, of course, thought that Firestone must be under pressure to win here. Al Spire, their racing team manager, will tell you no. They set a disciplined, conservative program for this season, and they have outshone their expectations. And the results that they got at Michigan, and they almost won the Indy 500, now they're in command here that is further down the road than they ever expected to be at this stage of their return season. And Ribeiro now running at a record pace. The record pace, 133.6 set by Ray Hall. And now Ribeiro with eight laps to go at 134.085. 22 of the 26 starters still running, Jan Vegas. Checking in with Al Unser Jr., of course, this has huge championship implications. Al Unser Jr. in his Penske machine feels as though they're very, very tight on fuel. Originally, he was trying to chase down Andrew Ribeiro to get the lap back. Now, he's really slowed off the pace, just trying to conserve fuel. Now, if anything happens, of course, that throws a whole wrench into the championship scenario. 